Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Alice, and welcome back to the final episode of No Brother the 90. Now, some of you may notice that I am not starting off from where my previous episode ended, and for those who did not see the community post I made last Sunday, I've got some bad news for you. The recording I had when I leveled from 85 to 88 got corrupted. And that means that I was unable to provide you with any of the material that I recorded that day because my files just completely messed up. I made a small mistake on my recording software and that caused the whole thing to just crumble down and I'm really sorry. And I know this was a very important episode and I'm very bummed about it too, but well... Mistakes happen. I'm human after all. But anyway, um... I acknowledge how important this episode was, especially to those who wanted to go through the DK in mine quest line. So I'm gonna be taking this time to explain how the whole thing went up, how the whole quest line in the previous episode ended up. And I can show that to you because I happen to have some stream material from my previous times when I did that with my other characters. So that doesn't mean that for those who still want to get to the deeper parts of the DK in mines that you'll be completely on your own. I can provide you all the information that you want on that. For those who don't really care, I'll be putting a timestamp down below, and I'll be also putting somewhere here on the text as well, that when you can, like, start watching the actual video. But from here on out, I'll be explaining the whole questline from ground up, so you guys don't have to be worried about how the whole DK My questline works. So starting off, we have all of these quests over here, and as you can see, we have all in all nine quests that you have to do to get yourself into the furthest reaches of DK Mine. So as I said before, there is the level 85 quest that you have to start from Bernard, and that one requires you to hunt yourself some um, pink roach larvas, or roach larvas in general. First of all, you have to find yourself some blue roach and pink roach sap. You can find these from the roach larvae, which in turn were spawned from those little eggs you would see in the dungeon. And opening those and killing the lar larvas contained within should provide you eventually with all the sap that you need. It is a very simple quest, and once you're done with that, you can go back to Bernard. After you're done with that, then another hard quest comes in. This one requires you to kill some more roach queens. You will need a queen roach sap from both of the variants, a blue roach queen sap and a pink roach queen sap, and that of course happens to be the way that you have to kill those creatures in order for you to drop them. This drop chance is not guaranteed, and I believe that the drop chance is actually lower than on the previous quest that we did on the Renon's quest line, so prepare for a few kills. I was lucky enough at Noben though that I got both on first tries, but I know from experience that I've killed several before I could actually drop them on my other characters. This guy's incredibly lucky, honestly. Once you're done with that quest, you will be finally rewarded with the Bernard card, which will give you entry through the door that you can see on the left once you enter the Pink Roach area. This one will give you access to the next quest NPC on the quest line, Kazen, and also to the first batch of enemies that you can find beyond Roaches, the Green Trilly Piece. Kazen is gonna ask you to collect him some toys from the ground at first and give you an easy 10% experience, but after that he's gonna ask you to kill a bunch of green Trilly Piece to drop some ribbon moves from them. And once you get 30 of those, you have to go back to him and he will grant you with the next quest. But this one won't be so easy. The next quest requires you to provide him with some pure ribbonum, which isn't as easy as the normal ribbonum was. For this, you will need the Ribbonum you gathered from earlier, but you will also need some Treedum, which is collected from uh, Violet Trilly Piece that you're gonna find further down the dungeon. However, you don't have access to that part yet, as you don't have the required ID card to gain access to it. That was the door that you saw on your left once you went for a Green Trilly Piece. I should also mention that the quest that will actually grant you the pure Ribbonum that you need to Kazen will be located somewhere in the desert. You will have to go talk to this guy called Nain that is near the Muffrins, and he will provide you with the quest that requires you to collect some Ribbonums and Treedums. But again, before we can get to Treedum, we had to get the ID card. And that quest is given by Cell, who is located at Darkoman Kipra, the little way station between all the enemies between 51 to 60. You are told to seek out Andri, who is located near Watankas. He will then provide you with the quest which requires you to kill 30 Captain Watankas and a giant Watanka. This one obviously is not an easy mission as Giant Watanka is level 89, so for those who don't have a partner or play solo, you better get your buffs at least from somewhere. And possibly also use some consumes. If you somehow manage to kill the Giant Watanka and also kill the other Captain Watankas around it, you will finally get the Andri card, which in turn will give you access to the area where the Valley Tree Piece are located at. Coincidentally, he will also provide you with a follow-up quest called the Bloody Corridor, 
And this one will require to kill some blood trilipies for their shells, and also some mutated key can work as that you can find at the end of the dungeon. The blood trilipies are located at the very end of the cave with valid trilipies in it. There is a small corridor you can go through, and once you click the portal from there, you will get to the end destination that we all want to get to, the blood trilipies and the mutated key can work as there within. So at this point, if you're already happy with getting to the audio grinding spot, you can leave it there. Once you have the entry card, you are already set. But if you want to get the extra XP from the quest within, you can also just go grab the tree gems, turn those in for the pure ribbonums, and turn the pure ribbonums into Kazen. And that way you will finish the quest line from Kazen, and you will also get yourself a pure necklace. A necklace with 600 HP, but no HP restoration. Whether that's more important to you or not, is up to you. That pretty much covers all that I did on that episode though. After I was done with all the questing, I ended up doing an extra hour of running with Timor. One of my viewers who happened to have a Master Ringmaster stood before my level and volunteered to be part of my leveling journey. And he will be doing so this time around as well. So the plan here is now, because I am already mostly done with questing, there's only one quest that I have to do, and that is from an NPC in the dungeon. Do you guys remember D. Kane from the Pink Rose Room at the back? Yeah, if you go talk to him, now that we finish the Bloody Corridor quest, he will give us another quest, which tells us to turn in even more um, Blood Trilipy shells. And once we do that, we'll be basically done. We get the attunement for the Meteor Niker, and also we get a bunch of XP from doing that. I think that's gonna be another 20 to 25% at this level. So it is worth doing because I already got all the shells with me. And well, yeah. I mean, why should I not do that? It's very easy to do. Aside from that, that's all the questing I can do. All the quests beyond that are just locked behind level 90. So we will be doing our last grinding spur from here on out. And I hope that after maybe three or four hours of grinding, we'll finally reach our journey's end. Also, some other things I need to also mention here because, wow, there's so much I have to catch up on because a lot happened also in the previous episode, but since you don't have the material anymore, I have to start and explain that stuff again. So, you may notice that I finally have myself angel axes and myself a suit. As for the suit, as you may remember, I've reserved a very good day suit, this one right here, with four piercings that I bought for 150 million with my main. I really wanted to buy this with Noben, but because I already spent money on the previous suit that I got, because I didn't expect to find this good of a suit for 150 million, I decided to put it on my main as a ransom. So, I have now paid the 150 million to my main, and I bought the suit, so I can finish this off with my set. And now my set is complete, with plus 10 strength, and also pieces between plus 5 and plus 7. I'm gonna finish the whole setup to be plus 6. So we are gonna be having something just about the same level as the Myricorn set. Except just a little bit better. Because we have some extra strength and also extra piercings. So as you can see here, we got this whole beautiful set here. As for the Angel Axis, guys, you're gonna have a hard time believing me. But listen to me. I really wish I had recorded this. I have not had the habit of recording any of my shopping sprees anymore because I initially did that on my earlier mercenary videos because I wanted to show you how the whole reselling thing works. But because I haven't been doing that for a long time because there was no need to, I haven't done that as a habit. And now, since I haven't done that, you're gonna have a hard time believing that I bought two Angel Axes for 45 million total. Not joking. And for perspective for those people who don't know, who are not into Temia, these axes are normally 150 million clean. So you're gonna be asking me, how the hell did you get these two axes for a total of 45 million? And all I can tell you is pure luck. I just happened to find the right store at the right time, and I can believe it myself. As soon as I saw those axes, I just immediately bought it, and then I just had an afterthought, oh crap, I should have recorded that. So, my lack of habit ended up costing me your trust, probably, but, guys, look, look, look. Even if this didn't happen, I was ready to spend hundreds on this. If you look in my bank here, I got a bunch of scrolls and a bunch of other goodies that could have gotten me a lot of money here. These scrolls alone here could have been around 200 million. This axe about 40 to 50 million. These cars total about 50 million too. So that's already basically 300 million right there. And also not to exclude any of the other stuff that I have here and as well as these piercing cards that I have or the upgrade cards. 
Yeah, I could have made the 300 million just fine. And, well, I would have more money at this point, but because I spent money on these scrolls just recently, because I honestly had no reason to save my money anymore, I just decided, who cares? Honestly, who cares? I already got everything that I needed. I don't need to be holding on to 150 million. I might as well just liquefy it if I see cheap offers. So, I need you guys to trust them my word. 100% I bought this from the market from an independent vendor by pure luck. Some people don't know prices. I think the 50 million axe that I found was complete accident that they were supposed to put for 150 million, but they forgot a zero. But the guy that sold for 30 million, I generally think they didn't know the price. So I sent them some email or um, some mail in this game. I figured I should, I might as well just tell them that, dude, you should have prices a lot better. I appreciate the bargain, but really don't scam yourself anymore. They haven't sent me any response anymore, but I also had some one of my friends also like talk to me about this Like I told him that I need to reserve an angel axe and I was ready to pay like 120 million for it 140 max and when I told him that <laughs> um, I find one for 30. He was just so so elated about that. So yeah That's really all I can say at this point though I cannot guarantee that you guys will trust me on this, but I wish I had the recordings. I learned my lesson now. I should really be recording my shopping sessions from now on. Or, well, if there's even gonna be one of those sessions, but... Um, if I ever wanted to have some proof that I got something for a good price, I really need to be recording all the time, because... Really, my when I see a good price, my hand goes faster than my mind. I'm so used to shopping at this, ga at this game at this point, and I'm really sorry about not providing you evidence, but I was ready to pay for these axes, and even yesterday I had 150 million on me, just so I can buy another axe for a proper price. But, well, I'm not turning down any cheap offers, so I guess we're gonna go with that. But anyway, so we now got these beauties all together, and I got a bunch of money on Noben that I never thought I would be having this much extra <laughs> at the end of this, but... Oh man, well, I guess just being frequent on the market really helps. But anyway, now that this whole conversation is over, actually, one more thing. You don't see the XP disparity anymore, but I also tried some giant hunting with Noben. That didn't go well. I gave it a few shots, but I found out that the giant iron I was supposed to farm, they had the poison sting, which means double hit. And that on enrage, maybe it consumes, impossible to survive. So... I did some giant hunting, I attempted to do so, but that didn't go so well. I died a few times, I didn't get anything, and I, did, I ended up catching up by killing some pink roaches. Until I reached back to the XP I was at. But again, we're not on that episode anymore, but I thought I should just let you know as well, because, well... I happened to implement it to be a part of my experience. But anyway, now that I'm done explaining, I think, everything that I wanted to say, and I hope that this explained everything that you needed to know about DK, about um, the gameplay that I've done, and where I'm gonna be going from now. For those who might still have any questions about DK and Mines, please do let me know in the comments below, or you can check out my streams from earlier um, on Twitch. I have some stream recordings there, I don't know exactly what the episode names were, but you should be able to find something under the around the areas of my streams called project ringmaster because that was the time when i was leveling my ringmaster to catch up with my ranger so they can join me at the blood truly piece so if you check those streams around you will find me doing the quest both on my knight and with my ranger and i think that should be more than enough information if you feel like you were still a bit lacking but anyway let's move on to the main topic after 21 minutes of explanation. So here we have Timor that was volunteering on me on the previous episode, or that was supposed to be the previous episode, and we are gonna be having his services for this as well. Because he happens to be a Master Ringmaster just in the level that I needed, and I don't think there's anybody else that is suitable for the job right now. So with natural selection, he happened to be the only choice, and honestly, I'm very happy that he's willing to do this much for me, and at the very least, at least I can give him some levels, even if not as effectively as his own blade would. All right, Timor. Are you ready for the last bird? Oh, all the explanation is out of my chest now. I was so worried that I would forget something to say, but honestly, giving myself the quest log and also the items in my inventory as a reminder what I had to say just really helped there. But now that that's out of the way, we can focus on the main treat of the day, which is the leveling part. It's a little weird thinking about how this series will be coming to an end. And I was prepared to do this next week, but now 
things just suddenly turned that it would be today. I just can't believe that that happens to be the case. And coincidentally, also another thing that's going to be ending on my channel is also the Borderlands series that's been running on my Twitch. Me and my friend are doing our last DLC in that game. So that means once um, this week is over, I'm going to have two series that are going to be having an abrupt ending. And that means I have to do a lot of reorganization with my content. I'll have to think about what I'm going to be doing after an open. I have, I have some ideas, but I still have to also catch up on the things I actually want to bring to life. And I might have to consider having something else to stream on my Twitch as well once the Borderlands stream is over. And because I'm going to be streaming more often probably once I'm done with this series. Because I'm going to be starting to do some uploads probably like in two week periods instead of one. So I can like work more on guides and some more refined content. So that leaves me more wiggle room for streams hopefully. But honestly we'll have to see about that. I, re I don't really know how it's gonna form out until I actually get to it. It's very hard to plan things out when the whole content creation process is an abstract that doesn't have a defined amount of time put into it. Where are you BRB? What's away for two minutes? Oh, that's fine, dude. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's cool. Sorry, I had a pretty long catch up to do there. How to explain a whole episode's worth of content and explain what's been happening in between. Took me a casual amount of 20 minutes. But yes, I'm ready for the grind now. Are you? I'm actually gonna start heading over already because I feel like it's already gonna be there. Might as well not waste this time. Yeah. Awesome. Did you discover a party yet or shall we find another? Oh, I should also mention, <laughs> as I just said that I had remembered everything. I also did finish the Envy Devs quest line at 85. That gave me another 75% XP, so... If you have done all the Envy Devs quest line so far, you should go finish it up now that you're at 85. It's gonna be insane amount of XP, and you also get three cheap pros. With PD tents. So, get the piercing, guys. It's gonna be awesome. It looks kinda bad right now. Oh, really? Hmm. Is it really that bad? Well, it's not Easter anymore, so I suppose that was to be expected. This is my general experience when I use to record these on Tuesdays, typically. I moved on to weekends for a reason. But, well, I guess that means that we'll just have to make our own for the time being. I think leveling our own party to 10 shouldn't be that long, given our levels. And any party is better than not at all, eh? Looks like it. Yeah, sadly. We can give it a check later on, though. We can invite your blade to be a placeholder so we can check around, just in case. If you don't mind running two accounts. Oh, there he is. Nice. Well, I guess we should get going then. Oh, and also one more thing. The tower. Tower is another leveling method that we'll be showing you at the end of this episode. Because I want to do that doubly as a way to a preview to you what tower is. And also to show you the final power of Noben at level 90. Without elements there, but just so we can see the power gap. And because I think it's gonna be a lot easier with Noben being fully geared. I could. Well, up to you. At least it would allow us to look for parties every once in a while without losing our progress. Yeah, sorry guys. As you can understand, that was a lot I had to say. But yeah, I'll be showing the tower to you as well. And again, tower is a place you can go to level from 86 beyond. So if you already are 85, so you level up at the enemy depths. Go ahead, try a tower. Free daily XP. And you get to see that at the end of the episode. I'll even, put, I'll even mark it for those who are interested. Who don't want to watch the grind all the way to the end. But well, that's your decision. He's online. Alright. Party invite. Roam it. There we go. Nice. So we got now that sorted out. All set. Let's get going then. Might as well just not waste any time anymore because we still got a pretty long grind ahead of us. I mean, okay, we are in decayed minds, but that doesn't mean our leveling experience is gonna be a joke. We're still gonna be stuck here for three hours. And I'm prepared for that. Even for four. I'm getting only 0.04 EXP or something like that from each kill. It's, it's a lot better than I had at Watankas, but it's still very low. So I had to be prepared for that. I don't have any apps, sadly. So I also gotta take that into account. There's also one more quest that we can do on the quest line since we just did the bloody corridor earlier. Like I said at the decane. But we'll be coming across him along the way. I should actually remind you more that... By the way, I gotta talk to decane at... Roaches. I can do the final turn in still. <sighs> To be honest, I'm so happy that Timor was willing to really just help me on this one on such a short notice. 
Since when I told him that the recording got corrupted, I was just so sad about it. And I really didn't want to bother him so much about it. But he was still okay with arranging a time with me on a short notice. And he was ready for a few hours on this one. So I'm really happy that our schedules managed to line up there regardless. And I can still potentially provide with another episode by the end of this week. I'm hoping this is gonna be on the week 14. So that you guys don't have to worry about... Ooh, so that you guys don't have to worry about, so that you guys get to see the episode despite all the turbulences in time. Risky, dude. I'm scared whenever he does that, I swear to god. Alright, let's go see that guy then. Um, I'm on water. Oh. Oh, shit. Well, I'm just gonna run through, I'm sorry about that. Oof. Okay, so talk to Deacon here. We get a quest to turn in. Ah, you need one million penny to open the door, but for now, collecting three, 30 blood will be shells and defeating three moon tank and workers will be enough. Yeah. So yeah, we have the three little shells already, but we don't have the we don't have the key can worker kills yet, but we'll come to those later. Hey, there's one of my viewers, but I just happen to have some work to do here as well, so I'm gonna get moving on. Good luck at reaching level 90. You should get to doing doing the Bernard quest line. You're getting reduced EXP from roaches beyond their level. So through here, we'll go for just the blood drill piece over here for those who need to visualize still in case that where the blood drill cave is. So we are at the blood drill piece now. We just run all the way back there. You can see a little corridor there. Once we get there, we'll find our little por portal that, lead us that leads us to blood drill piece. Finally, I can switch set at 90 from this 40 by one. I have done all quests here. Why are you not at blood drill piece yet? I know, but it's probably better than Luya's. Mm. You never know if you don't try. I don't like the place. Ah, fair. That's okay. It really does suck. Well, good luck leveling. Let's start off with the quest I picked. Gotta kill three workers. Then I'll quickly return back to turn it in. And then we can consume. I shouldn't have myself eat your candy. I should have made some. Almost 89 then. Yep. Um, let's see how much XP actually it is. Um, progress. 23.44%. I'll be at 82% after. All right, BRB. So back to pink roaches we go. Very easy to grind because we already grinded a whole hour's worth of blood with your shells from before. Don't have to worry about that so much anymore. By the way, playing solo without ringmaster like you do. Oh, really? Have you caught up any partners then? Oh, if I own. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because I haven't been going completely with my one. That would be crazy, honestly, because ringmasters are pretty important in this game, to be honest. <laughs> Sometimes can find. It's good to build connections since you might use them later. And they do make your life a lot easier. Mad respect, though. Hope the challenge hasn't been too bad. Although with Ranger, I believe it's a lot more tolerable. All right, so we're back at the pink roaches now. Now I have to be careful, kill these guys away, so I can get back to DK. Even without any buffs or like any bonus, I'm just doing insane damage to these guys still. That one level increase really just matters. Easy to get here, no experience further of how it will go. It is, can actually hit 100% attack speed. I figured, and hit rate can't be half bad. Right. Let me turn this in, and now the questing is fully done. So this is the last quest we'll be getting before 90. Came to turn in the last quest available. Good luck on your grind. Let's see who hits 91st. I believe I will though, because, well, I have the advantage. In many ways. I have a remaster and a better grinding spot. A grinding spot that I'm willing to tolerate because I happen to be a crazy little buffoon. Thanks. That quest line sucked. Need help from guild. I can imagine. The Quaroach Queens and the Giant suck. That's one way of doing it. If you don't want get buffs anywhere. Well, regardless, contacts. Helps a lot. I will not deny that. I didn't watch your latest episode yet, so I went blind. The latest episode doesn't cover the Bernard questline. That episode sadly went under. Gonna be explaining it through my stream footage, though. Will stream footage be on YouTube? The original footage will be found on Twitch. I'll be explaining that on the beginning of the video. Hope it will be inclusive enough and you can always ask me more questions. But right, I got lots of grinding to do. I think I'll put my game face on. To 90! Alright. I'm done chatting with a viewer. That cheap guy from earlier happens to be one. But I'm ready to go full speed now. Alright. I'm gonna consume. Upcut, strength potion, crit chance, and well. 
I think that's all I do for now. Well, luckily I'm bad with names, so I don't know anyone really. Well, you don't have to, honestly. They're not from Twitch, but on YouTube, so... Just the ranger we passed by. No need to concern yourself more over it. Alright. I'll put on some movement speed as well. Might as well speed up the process when I'm gonna be fully consuming myself. That's not wrong. But yeah, our XP gains were before like 0.0461 or something from our first skills at level 87. But at 88, I think we only get like 0.04. Hold on, how much is that? Oh yeah, we're still not on actually proper party, right? Forget about that. Well, we're gonna fix it up later. Um, I wasn't. I was like, di I was like, did we meet anyone on the way? <laughs> Dude, you're not just bad with names. You is blind. <laughs> but yeah, I totally forgot that we were still a little party, but we'll see. We're getting like 10% party XP per kill. 8%, so... We'll get a party to tank really quickly. And once we're done with that, we're just gonna go crazy ham. Well, I don't look really around running through the mines. My ADHD picks up on everything, but fair enough. No problems. That just bounces to strike a conversation, though. <sighs> We're gonna be stuck here for three hours, though. To imagine, though, that we can actually get more than a level in that three hours is something that baffles me. Since last time we got about 40% an hour, and with this I feel like we can do the same, roughly. Maybe not as fast when we hit 89, but close enough. 30 to 40% per hour. If I don't need to interact with someone, I'm like, whatever. Fair enough. I'm the one who picked a social hobby, after all. Change. Let's do it! Alright, so really XP. 0 0.5575, 0 0.5982, so 0 0.0407. That's just about as I remember it to be. Yeah. So solid 1% per 25 kills. Not bad. We can get extra from the works and the gods, but that isn't, you know, all that important. Because they are not as effective for our killing speed with our with our water weapons. Right, I'm not actually sure if I ever finished the sentence I said earlier. I might have cut it off, but I guess the other alternative that you could have gone for here in the DK mines was fire, because blue roaches were wind and mutant king worker gods are also wind. But the reason I did not pick them up is because, first of all, I honestly didn't remember, but also because it's very hard to tell the guards and workers apart, and I don't think there's nearly as many key coons here as there are blood for peace. So I feel like quantitatively, that is not as good. But I think I might go for them at level 90 once I get my axes. Get myself fire, and then also with earth so I can like tackle both wind and electric monsters and go from there. I can tell you like your food, and they call me a glutton. But yeah, it's definitely a calling thing. Not just about anyone will have what it takes to be a creator. There's also those guys that ride on the fame of other celebrities. Naming people like Mr. Beast. But they will never get the kind of reputation that he himself has, since it's not their own content. Uh, the bad thing about these workers is that they actually happen to be my mortal enemy. Me being water, I guess electricity. The worst possible combination ever. But the Geekum guards are still normal damage, so those are better. But I need to avoid those workers as much as I can. Well, I mean, like, I don't care how fame you are. You're still a human for me. That's honestly how I see things, too. Like, I don't tend to go crazy around people who are known. I feel like even if I met one of my favorite YouTubers, I would still hold a human-to-human -human level of conversation. They might have publicity, but they're still other people. Normal manners still apply. The only thing I know, Connor Creator got way too much luck in games. I, uh... I wish I could say otherwise. <laughs> and I really wish I had evidence over what I got is legit. But, uh... Right, you don't know yet. I found a second Angel Axe. This time for 30 million. Oh, you read it? I mean, he's in my server, so I guess, fair. Told me that I should never skip on recording that stuff. Well, I've got 2 plus 20 rings under the out of 1. Yeah, I mean, I guess everyone's got those moments. It just feels so much like fate that... Only axes specifically, I found so cheap. And just when I needed them the most. I really feel like a cheat at this point, even though I've done nothing wrong. But sad, no purchase locks exist for the consumers. I wish my notice board would at least show them too. Well, I could make up some theories, have you got them? I mean, you could. And that's exactly why I hate I have no evidence. I really don't want to pull the trust me please card on this. Maybe some hidden viewers who saw open in time quick make a shop with cheap axes. I mean... <laughs> You got a point there. It still doesn't explain the A pro from episode two though. That was insane luck there. Well, at least I learned from that mistake. Know yourself and be always prepared to show what you got. But right, on the topic of fame too. I really like the idea of riding on my fame either, but I mean, 
when I get people approaching me daily, even without asking for it. I kind of have to accept that I am a kind of known presence. I have had plenty of people offering to be part of my videos, just because they want to be in them. So you never know what everyone's motives are. Some are pure accidents, some are perhaps arranged. But I do appreciate that you're doing this for me as a friend and not as a viewer. You're not interested in the publicity, but just helping me out. Makes it all the more genuine for me. But really, you're likely going to find me run running my keyboard for the next three hours. So I apologize in advance for draining your social battery. Do let me know though if you just want to take it easy. Well, I'm more on my second monitor, so it's going to be tough. I mean fair. You have a pretty simple job after all. Nothing wrong with that. Everyone has their own playstyle. It's unlikely that I die. Yeah, no need to tense up like me. And I trust my map awareness enough to not cause either of us too much trouble. Never mind the leader I pulled last time. That was just one. And I almost pulled that Trilipi there. That hazardous blood Trilipi. That would have been a comical timing there. I think Timur almost got it because he was healing me, but yeah. One, you did it at least twice. Did I? I mean, I think I pulled a leader and a hazard once. But I think that was really it. 30 minutes per one ass pull. I don't think that's a bad record. In a room filled with assholes. Well, aren't there only one or two of each here? Uh, There's at least two hazardous ones. And this room is kind of big, to be honest. Yeah, they're mostly situated at the back. But there's so little actual blood trilly piece here. I have to stretch a bit if you don't want to stop killing. Or maybe I'm just a little risky. What are you doing on your second monitor, by the way? Watching anime or something? Or something you don't want to share. Sorry, second screen. <laughs> Ironic. Nah, LAC LOL Pro League. Oh, the season's running right now? Playoff Spring Split. Ah, okay. I've never really been the type to follow tournaments. But I suppose it's a good pastime while playing something like Flife. And I haven't been active with LOL for who knows how long. I have the game, but mostly play just for friends. Yeah, I'll watch streams 24-7 if grind Flife. I mean, that much was obvious to me, given how you watch my streams while you're playing too. Flife alone is a bit boring. I did something on the side. I mean, I'm the same, basically. I had the same problem with RuneScape as well. RuneScape is the right kind of itch that I'm looking for in an RPG, but it is a bit too slow for me. If something needs the attention, sure, but you're leveling, nope. Yeah, anyone would feel that after doing that for hundreds or even thousands of hours. As for me, I tend to listen to music if I'm not streaming. I've never really been that into streams myself, though. As ironic as that may sound as a streamer, but I should probably start watching or at least listening to streams too. Not as much for the pure entertainment, but also for learning. There could be a couple of things I could pick up from people, judging from how they do their streams. Since honestly, I've never really had much to compare to. I don't think the act of comparison really was for streamer. I mean, I don't mean to imitate either, but more like if there's an aspect or two I could pick up, even if just a little subtle, then that would be pretty educational too. Just like with planning, having multiple perspectives can help. And it's better than doing like nothing at all. But of course, I'll stick to my own style. And I mean, people have been telling me that in their eyes, my streams already look professional. So I must be doing something right. And it, if not just for the streaming style, but maybe it could also invoke some ideas. Not copy pasting, of course, but Maybe implementing some of my own based on that. Or just a completely unrelated idea. Already got some ideas after Noben? Yeah, I got plenty. But they're still on the level of ideas since I haven't had the time to really flesh them out. And really, it's hard for me to plan anything as I don't know how realistic my goals are now. But I do have some games that I plan to play and some funny video or stream ideas that I plan to execute. Looking forward to shedding those some light. You should level up soon. 97%. Almost there. I know there was also the period with no buffs at all, but the XP rate isn't that good at the minute. I'm getting only like 30% an hour at the minute. That's going to go down even further once I hit 89. You're almost at their level, so yeah. Yeah. Still better than anything in the 95 range would give. Just 80 plus leveling experience to you. And only gets harder. Um, you know, I've got some characters over 80. Yeah. 
and one right now too, with extra reduced experience. But yeah, XP past decay in mine just really sucks. Rather take my copium as long as I can. One has already reached 120 with reduced XP. Wait, your blade is already 120 master? Or are we just talking about 120 plus double experience? Not my blade. Oh, Jester? Yep. I see. Well, that makes sense. Did you take him to hero yet? For a stat page? Hero wasn't out then. Yeah, but I wasn't sure if you completely abandoned him at this point. I know you don't main him anymore, but just a little if. Yeah, my chest uh, hit the retirement home when I made my blade. Blade numbers were just better, huh? And yeah, level 89. Good job, dude. One more to go. Now, how much XP loss is that? 0 0.0360. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Point oh, 0.0360. A little rough. Slightly over 10% drop. But I suppose we'll make it. You'll get more than I do. I mean, I know, but that still sucks. The video is longer, the longer I take the level. But glad we are both not in an absolute hurry. Not like three hours of wipe. And I don't have storage issues anymore either. Got myself an 8 terabyte HDD not too long ago. Since I kind of burned through my 4 TB. You never realize how much space video files take. Until you actually do it. For content view, 4 is kind of low. Yeah. I did realize that afterwards. Didn't figure I'd run out this quickly. And I don't think my motherboard has any more SATA sockets. So if I want to upgrade further, I'll have to get external ones. Or then just get even bigger. Those things do be hella expensive though. Even the 8 terabyte was about 150 euros. I don't know your PC specs, so I can tell you. Yeah, that much is given. But I built my own PC, so I know better than anyone. You don't see ready-made PCs usually built for everything. At least most tech stores here mostly supply either office PCs or gaming PCs. Gaming PCs can't handle processes too well. And office PCs are not made strong for anything in general. So there's a little outburst of screw it, I'll do it myself. And it's good because I now understand what each component does. Took me three days of studying, but it was worth it. But yeah, at least I won't have to worry about that for now. And if I do eventually need an upgrade, I hope that the earnings I get will cover for it. Well, building pieces is something I could do in my sleep. I wouldn't say that I can go that well, but at least I can now confidently say that I know how to. I think I built my first one, I was 14 or 15. That's a good early start. But for me personally, this was the first PC I could ever actually get for myself. I wasn't fortunate enough for a wealthy upbringing. And while I don't assume that was the case for you either, somehow my parents always sapped me out of my money. But I got older siblings, so I got things they didn't need anymore. Oh, fair. I have older siblings too, but none of them actually dabbled onto PC building. Me and one of my elder brothers were the ones who dabbled into gaming. But my brother was mostly laptop or console guy back in my days. I've learned pretty much from my oldest brother. Yeah, I've had to be completely self-learned. My mom does have IT education, but... That's from pre-2000s, and she certainly doesn't have the best temper. She'd probably break the whole piece out of frustration. Well, I don't have it either, but wouldn't go that far. Yeah, she's a really impatient type, honestly. I'm also pretty bad at explaining, because I skip steps that are logical for me. Oh, so you don't have the kind of sympathetic perspective. Can't put yourself in somebody else's shoes. I've just forgotten that they don't know it. Yeah, and it's gonna be hard to ask questions. If they don't know what to ask. And impatient. Yeah, that might contribute to it. But well, in that case, I'd say that anything that could remotely go wrong should be explained. Just like they sometimes say, there's no bad questions. In the same way, there aren't bad explanations. Or something not worth mentioning. Depends on the context of who you're talking to too. Obviously, you don't have to go through every single detail when talking with another PC builder. But if it was someone you were trying to teach, even simple things can matter. Some might not even know how to tighten their screws right. I won't do it, to be honest. Yeah, like you said, it's a, it's a patient job. And do you know why I ended up making guides myself? Because I didn't like the ones that were out there. That too. But also because I didn't want to teach every individual person for an hour. Since really, I do that. I'd have random ass lectures with people who I think don't know how to play the game. That when I would say you do your research yourself. Easy for one to say if they don't know 
whether it's a bad playstyle. But they knew well, after my one hour lecture that they were doing it really bad. Absorbing knowledge is important, but not knowing when you should search for it is also another thing. It wasn't like they were misled. That's basically what the game offered to you, but they just didn't know better. So that's where I came in. And well, my other reasoning was that I wanted to reach out to others who I couldn't. Well, I got a friend who asked me like the simplest question. Oh yeah, that's a little annoying sometimes. Especially if you repeat the same thing multiple times. My response most of the time is G-E-Y-B-F.com. What does that stand for? Google is your best friend. Yeah, I feel you there. But truly, that wouldn't be the case either if it wasn't for creators like me. This game has a very limited amount of knowledge after all. It speaks volumes that even I, who has played this game for who knows how long, I still discover some new things about it. We can get a lot out of it with simple maps to be fair. Yeah, that's true. That's what I also entrust myself with. But it's just one of those things that you never knew that you needed something until you saw it. So sometimes it's not just about the idea of not bothering the search, but sometimes also not knowing when you should. Those moments I wish I knew earlier couldn't be any more relatable. And yeah, I'm the trial and error type of guy. Basically, first day when Dungeons came out, we basically had to run set there for two to three hours, analyze main maps, etc. All good made of me. Yeah, I'm the type to figure stuff out too. And in most cases, I do prefer avoiding wikis and stuff when playing games. I like to discover stuff myself and search it up when I'm not sure. Not just read up all about it beforehand. There's something more valuable to me for also discovering things myself, but that's just me. I also remember this one time related to dungeons. My friend noticed that the pet cages in Envy Depths have different colors. The one in the middle had blue and green, but the one at the end also had red. We didn't know at the time that the B pet was from bosses and the C pet from just the dungeon, but we discovered that just based on that. He did a few runs and then reported to me what pets he got and from what cage. And I came to the conclusion that the GB cage was C pets and the RGB cage was B pets. By the way, I have a bunch of uh, scrolls of return on me. So if I run full, I can just go back real quick. Honestly, just ended up here due to Green Monk events. Gotta make use of them while I still can. And DK in particular is an asshole to get back into. But yeah, that was roughly 25% an hour. We might be stuck here for a while. And I was kind of thinking for saving tower for level 90. <sighs> it's getting honestly very hot here. I think I should take off my hoodie. I'm not even running my freaking radiator. How is it so hot in here? 20 freaking degrees. <sighs> We're going serious mode with the dragon now. With the dragon shirt. But yeah, I don't judge people for not knowing. I justify the fact that I'm a little sharp, so I don't expect everyone to catch up on things the same way I do. And well, if there is demand for knowledge, and it's hard to find and poorly explained, then why not just do the community a service? But really, I just love helping people. I guess it was just a natural choice for me. And I do also like making people laugh. Well, if it's simple help, it's fine. But don't make me explain something to them. Sometimes I can even explain my thoughts to myself. Yeah, it's definitely a talent. But I guess you just wouldn't cut it as a guide maker. But there's nothing to be ashamed of. We all have our specialties after all. I could deliver stats, etc. about the rest. Nah. I'm both analytical and good at explaining, so it just goes well together. I provide guides with actual value, and did not just explain something I don't know anything about. And if I don't know, I'll just figure it out. I'm supposed to be the one teaching after all. I'm not the numbers guy. I'm a number cruncher, but I'm also close to people, so this was suitable for me. It's crazy to think that I've been taking content creation seriously for about a year now. Can't believe myself that I've gotten this far with this hobby of mine. But I guess I must be doing something right. That's a sign you're getting old. <laughs> well, that's one way to put it, that's for sure. And also accumulating actual experience. Not just getting a fix for three months and forgetting all about it. I've been making videos long before, but it's always just been whims until now. But now my whims are backed by strong determination. And I drive on like before. Inventory full? Yep. I just threw all my crap away. BRB then. Let me just use my scroll of return. Let's go to darken and what? So, for those who don't know how the scroll of return works. So, you use that item and it will basically just 
warp you to the town that you want to go to. After we're done selling, let's do quick sell, get myself 7 million. Um, I won't get rid of these because I'll be getting more of these anyway. And once we're done, we just double click this thing here. Actually, wait. There we go, yeah. So we double click that and there we then we end up back where we came from. Pretty convenient, huh? Especially when running to decay takes like 10 minutes. That would be just incredibly hard to do. Glad I got like 13 of these. Probably the most annoying trip to make without any. Um, chamber right before red meteor is more annoying. Ah, oh, fair. Sorry, I'll correct myself. The most annoying thus far. Red Meteor, of course, comes much later. But during this whole leveling journey, there's no place as annoying to get as this. Well, maybe stop making new characters and focus on one. Bro! Stop! <laughs> Look, I've got big plans, okay? Don't stop my stride. How about nope? <laughs> I get how you feel. I'll get there soon enough. Like, I can focus on one. Five years later, maybe you're 100. Just you watch. I'll be 100 pretty soon. Like, I can focus on one. It's just been... different. Don't have the hours I used to, so I expected things to go a lot smoother than I planned it to be. But I honestly feel like once I'm done with Nobin, my account will be taking new strides. I'll reach the 105 benchmark pretty quickly once I commit to it. Until now, it's just been kinda hard. Okay, 105 in a week, go. All right, not that quickly. I don't have that much time. Carry my channel and my school deadlines for a week, and then we'll talk. One week absolute vacation and BRB. But nah, that's not even nearly as important to me anymore as content is. Sick note. Nah, underhanded. Plus, it won't get rid of my deadlines. They expect you to do it even if you're arm and leg were amputated. Well, one week fun crunch time, really hard. It is, because I've got better priorities now. I'd rather be creating than just purely gaming at this point. If I was my former self with nothing better to do, I'd probably do it. But now, numbers aren't even nearly as important to me. Levels gonna wait. But I'll probably be playing more than just once a week now, though. Get yourself a red scroll and you have the urge level to not waste money. I would just stop playing at that point. That's what happened with OSRS. You can tell what takes priority one in my list. And it's not even me forcing myself. It's just a natural choice for me at this point to consider content as number one. And it's fun crunch time for me too, so looking forward to summer. Gonna have to do some work too, but once I'm a free time, it's all games and videos. So yeah, pardon me. I'm not a true flyfer anymore. I'm turning into someone who does this kind of for a living. Well, summer is the time when I don't function, really. That's typically the same for me, too. Or at least has been until now. But times change. I won't be losing any priorities even on summer. It's gonna fly by doing a lot of things. Even if just a little different than now. It's not that, I'm just really dead then. Oh yeah, I get exhausted by the heat too. But I hope to combat that. Supply myself with infinite tubs of ice cream. Too bad aces are expensive. Won't help really. Yeah, I know, but it's something. Too expensive and loud. Don't know about loud, but expensive for sure. For a student especially. But well, I'll admit that I won't have nearly as much energy then than I do in winter. But I'll give it my best shot. Still gotta keep going even if I'm running on 50%. 50% would be nice. More like 10%. I definitely can't think straight then. But at least I won't go that low. Summer is not that scary for time for me. I'm just dead laying in bed. I still game and try getting something done. But certainly won't be as productive. Everything about 23 degrees Celsius is murder to me. Yeah, it likely is the same for me too. I actually already had to take my hoodie off because... My apartment is nearly at 21 degrees. My PC and my overworked body are radiating too much heat. I don't even wear a hoodie in the deepest winter. All your t-shirt gang. I wouldn't say I could handle only t-shirts all the time, but I could go into it well deep in the winter until it gets like minus 20 degrees or something. And most of the time I'm just wearing a hoodie because it's a comfort clothing for me. Even then I put the rubber another jacket than a hoodie. Not your type. I just feel naked without a hoodie. Because if I get somewhere and it's hot there, I can take off the jacket. I can take off a hoodie. I mean, I use zipper hoodies myself. It's easy to put it on half heating and take it off pretty quickly. The pullovers, I personally cannot handle. Okay, I've got one zipper hoodie, that's it. I'm more of a jacket guy. Coats, etc. I just feel like I have to wear a protective film or a cloak at all times. Once I'm feeling actually encouraged to spend a bit more, 
I'm dreaming of grabbing one of those full-size jackets myself. Like, I'm one of those types who thinks that lab coats are cool. Covering myself in this long one piece just sounds like a dream come true to me. Jackets I personally avoid unless it's winter. Never bothered getting me one of those summer jackets. 80% hoodie, 20% jacket. Well, they can be good, it's raining real hard. I'm always carrying a portable umbrella. My bag is always a chest of many things. I got three to four things that I have if I leave the house. Simple enough. I always carry my bag with me. I don't like to look into the weather every day or anything like that. I just like to be prepped for anything when the situation needs it. Need to take a note of something? I got a pencil case and a note notebook. Always carry my calculator to school because I always forget it. And well, the umbrella in case I need it. Well, I'm not in the situation to need a calculator so I can just use my phone. Yeah, that's true. And I have to carry my lappy too, everywhere. But that's of course school dependent. I've got a rain jacket so I don't need an umbrella. Do you let your legs get wet though? Don't really mind it. Yeah, me neither. German mindset. Guess that would be finished too. Although what does really suck is when it gets into your boots. Winter to spring period is especially hard because you can just find wet snow everywhere. Well, I had it once. Needed to drive like two hours with the car afterwards. Well, that's one way to cope with it. Lucky me had some sports shoes in the car, so I switched shoes. After a two hour walk through rain, because it started raining like out, like out of nowhere. I mean, that can happen. And weather predictions aren't always 100% correct. Most of the time they are, but... There's always room for risks. That's why I prefer to be prepped for anything and not worry about the ifs. I just use sneakers anyway. When I was young, we were somewhere near the mountains and a big thunderstorm came really fast. We basically sprinted back to the hotel. How far away was it? Made it in time, the next two hours we didn't want to be outside. A few kilometers. Oh wow, that's quite the run. Was it really that heavy rain? Heavy rain, really windy and yeah, a lot of thunder. Yeah, sounds pretty bad. Wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Like I said, I don't mind when I get wet from my legs. But if my torso or face get all wet, it annoys me. And I really hate the feeling when the skin gets too moist. Just being in a moist weather annoys me a bit. But it's to their own. Still can't believe some people can actually love rain. Well, I love the sun if I'm inside, that's it. For sure, it's a little relaxing in that way. But don't want to be outside like ever. Woo, that was close. Was you expecting it to come for me? Holy crap. That was pretty close. It was on to me. Yeah, it switched on to me after. Guess you must have timed your escape perfectly. So this was your plan all along. <sighs> nah, I trust them. Leave Noben in this cave, hard stuck at 89. Dan, I need to go. My dog that doesn't exist ate my homework 10 years ago. Oh shit. What do you need the 10 year old homework for though? Reminiscing with your old teacher? Not an excuse to escape the failed plan. Yeah, right. Not suspicious at all. Yeah, I didn't get the homework to them, they still want it. Bro, that's one stinky teacher. You still haven't graduated from secondary school? Or some upper education that you were at 10 years ago? I did, but they still want that, I don't know why. Maybe they hate you. Sounds like a vendetta to me. On that note, I'm utterly convinced that my Finnish teacher from upper secondary hated my guts. Well, I didn't do anything, so why would they hate me? You don't always need a good reason. They must hate your jackets. Very the sweatshirt kind of a guy. But my old class was basically the friendliest class in the whole school, every teacher said, but... We were also the sleepiest class. You might be a little slow, but we love you all the same. I guess the other classes didn't get enough sleep. But yeah, the thing about my teacher... I don't exactly know what I did to earned their disfavor, but I just didn't happen to turn up for one of their tests because I accidentally slept over. And I asked for a possibility to redo the test, and they basically answered to me like I was their nemesis. He really sounded like he had it for me. Well, one teacher kind of hated me because I've embarrassed her in front of the class. I've never been like that. Neither I. I've always been the teacher's pet kind of a guy. I actually had a pretty chill conversation with my English teacher today before class. But it isn't as much in the sense of me looking for extra good boy points. I just feel like they're the only ones I can hold a real conversation with. It wasn't a real teacher, she was sick. More of, a, more of a substitute. And basically she asked who was the best at math to teach a bit. Yo, are you actually leveling at this hour? Yep. 
That doesn't happen too often. I actually used to record a lot of my videos on, on Tuesdays, but now it's an exception. And everybody was like, I am. So basically, once we were standing next to each other, I discovered she didn't explain it correctly. It was wrong what she said. She didn't believe me and shouted at me. I shouted back. Oh my god. You need a ringmaster for the last push? Now nah, I've got one. And in fact, even if I didn't, you couldn't come here. Good. Enjoy the last bit of leveling. I'll be watching the last episode. Look forward to it. Well, the teacher next door came in and I basically said that I'm right. Well, she never talked to me again for that week. She was there. And maybe I'm the reason somebody passed the last class. But it wasn't my fault either. Sounds like a real butter teacher. Real professional. I'm curious what you will be doing after 90. Well, we'll both see. And what other games you'll be doing. Well, I've got ideas. But I can promise you, it'll be variety. And also cool ideas for Flyf. There was a student in my last year. The guy who didn't pass the class. Yeah. Was it really because of you shaming her in the class? I'm getting a bit of life at the minute since Plunderstorm got released and on WoW. A new season will come in 4 to 5 weeks. And leveling 8 plus is rough. I get you there. Again, I do tense that one shouldn't take life too seriously. It's most pleasant when you're not 24 7 ing it. So take your time, man. Hope you like my other RPG content too. Because two girls basically told me he does nothing for the group project. I said to them, just talk to the teacher. And his grades were bad, and that was the nail in the coffin. I see. So that just confirmed that they had no intention of helping. Maybe if I didn't say anything, they wouldn't report him. Nah, I think you did the right thing. Even if they didn't report it, he would have gotten away with tardiness. I don't like him anyway. Yeah, serves him right. Like, I don't mean to be a self-righteous bastard, but one should stay where they belong. If they really like to feed off of others' efforts, they should really learn to pull their own weight. Let that be a harsh lesson to them. I think I will, but we will see. I'll say subscribe for sure, but to see what will be next. I'm up to some plunderstorm. Good luck with the last push. Thank you. Have fun. Well, I was in that class only one year because I missed a lot of time the year beforehand because of sickness. Even, that, even then, I passed my last class, but really bad. And we agreed beforehand I would do it again. Nobody expected me to get through, neither did I. I guess the teacher really liked your commitment. Usually redos are reserved for those who really don't give a damn. But at least you had a valid reason. And you seem to have the drive. That wouldn't help me, that was my last class. So it would have been either that or postponing school entirely just for that one class. I guess the teacher just sympathized with you. They just basically got some sick days off the record so I can write all tests for the graduation. They must have really liked you. No favoritism is the rule, but... You can't really stop people for bonding. Well, they said it's the best for me to get used to the stress, etc. So I won't have a hard time the second time because of my sickness, etc. I mean, true. But I really feel like if it was just purely professional, they wouldn't care. So take it from me. They must have respected you to some degree. Well, as a teacher, you're not really professional. They act like what's best for the student, which was basically the best for me that time. Well, that would also require building some sort of a relationship with you too. So at least you didn't have a bad mark on you. And I was a student who really wasn't a bad kid or something. I was always nice, etc. Yeah, that's my point. I think you didn't make an impact. Basically, I got through the first time with literally zero preparation. Well, at least you didn't have to postpone your studies for it. Anyway, my second hour of stuff is over. I'm gonna go sell my inventory now, and after that, we're starting third hour. 36% at the minute. Might honestly take two plus hours. Well, as an AOE, you would be done. Screw you. Alright. Alright, five million. Nice. Um, The ring I don't need. The earthquake card we don't need. That's worth nothing. Um, Also, ocean card. We don't need this thing either. The molly rings. Plus zero. Don't really have a use for that. Yeah. I guess to drop him back then. Oof. Okay, so now I'm gonna be without his heals for a bit. So we'll have to be a little bit careful around these monsters then. I just wish at this point that the workers are, weren't as big of a nuisance as they are right now. But it's not like I can really help it. We should also be looking for parties, but we would have to go all the way back to channel 1 for that. And if that ranger happens to be still there... Then that's very bad. To be honest, I'm also kind of tempted to grab one of my flower pots here. But then again, I do understand that the upcut is still a little bit more efficient than the bonus XP coming from that. Right, we have the cheers too! We need to use those as well. Of course. I'm so dumb. But I mean, that's just how it is. My XP gains are just about the same as they were with Hankus. Maybe a little bit better, but not by much. It would eventually come down to this. 
and it's gonna drop down even further once I go back to the real world out of the decay mines. At least the XP drop won't be too bad because I'll be moving to like level 96 months after 90. So the le six level gap does like alleviate the pain, but it's still gonna be worse than blood really piece, sadly. I might even be convinced to stay here until 91 because that way um, I could still get maximum XP from blood really piece, but I still need to check out how the XP is gonna be like after that point. Welcome back. What do you grab? Noodle salad I had from yesterday. Noodle salad, huh? Never had anything like it. Chicken salad, yes, but noodles. Interesting. Is it like your dinner, or did you deliberately make yourself a snack food? Dinner, lol. Yeah, I figured. Not to make bad assumptions, but you didn't come across me as a guy who would spend extra time in the kitchen. Oh damn, I forgot to feed the angel again. Oh damn it. Oh well, I'll deal with it later. Nah, too warm. You really are an Iceman like me. My parents and friends would always be amazed by how much I could endure the cold. Although now that I've gotten a bit slimmer, that isn't so much the case anymore. But I still do handle winter a lot better than summer. The only thing that bothers me is the winter ice erodes. Oh yeah, that's been the bane of my existence too. Maybe in a different way. You probably hate it because of cars. But for me, it's just plain dangerous as a pedestrian. Especially since I I'm carrying a laptop around with me. I basically need a car. Is your workplace that far away? More like I don't have bus or train line. That would really work. I had the same problem in my old city. But in my current one, as it is a popular student location, it has really functional bus lines. But I prefer going by foot because I want to save money. And also because I don't really do any other exercise. Trip to school double up as some daily exercise for me. My last school I needed to get up at like 5 when I didn't have a car. After I didn't have a license I stood up at 7. I had this time actually when I was going to a boarding school. I'd be there for weeks and go back on weekends. Thing is, it was like a four hour bus trip away. I had to wake up at five to go on a bus so I can attend the classes at 10. Every Monday was hell for me. I really am not an early bird, but that was the only time ever I actually had to wake before six. Never again. Right now I'm more of an early bird, but I can also be a night owl. I've been a night owl as long as I remember. I always prefer long nights and hated waking up early. Waking up at 6 versus at 7 it still makes a huge difference for me. Well, I had a time in my life when I went to bed at like 6 a.m. I mean, I could probably do so too. But to be honest, I am a pretty ingrained sleeper. What I mean by that is that if I cross a certain time of my usual bedtime, I get a huge melatonin spike. Like, I can fall asleep in the middle of gaming. My friends would also laugh when I would fall asleep in the middle of a VC. Okay, that's something I can't. <laughs> I find it so funny how my friends would try to talk to me. I would not get a response and they would go like e man and i just snap out of it for like 10 seconds speak out some gibberish and go back to sleep although i do know my limits at this point i know when to quit early i actually had a 24 hour stream at some point you might find it hilarious how i function then i just completely die at 16 hour mark play the game barely for two hours and then i'd get back up as if i was never tired aside from the Tolling feeling of being awake for 24 hours straight. Well, I don't do all-nighters anymore. Yeah, I've never been a type either. Like I said, my sleep habits make it really hard. But also, I just found myself a logic why I don't do that. If I could be spending that time playing with friends when they're actually active, and I'd actually be wide awake, rather than force myself to play at off hours and have a sleep, why would I waste those hours? Couple of hours here or there, it'll still be the same amount of time in hands. Only spent better. So yeah, I convinced myself out of any all-nighters. I did it a few years ago, but I think nowadays my body would just hate me. And yeah, I think mine would do the same. I don't trust my body would really appreciate that. But then again, that's also because I sleep very little. I can function with six to seven hours a day. So I heard 24 hours straight Final Fantasy. Maybe. Maybe one day, if I have time for that. But it would have to be pretty damn exciting for me to last that long. Usually the normal grindy games don't keep me up. Not enough stimuli. But you don't need that much grinding. Yeah, I guess. Depends on the title though. 
and grinding isn't the only criteria for not stimulating. Well, I've seen someone play FF7 for the first time today, and I was like, how the hell is she so overleveled? Maybe they like to overprep. I mean, I do like it in Final Fantasy's design that if something's too hard for you, you can grind to make up for it. Basically, she was mobbing the bosses. Oh, no challenge. But maybe they weren't the strategic type. And honestly, at least in FFX, there are moments when we have to. You know the boss fight in the Winter Zone? That thing's been plain impossible without enough stat boosts. Your characters wouldn't just last through one of the abilities. I wouldn't say. Well, at least I had a hard time with that back then. I could have improved from then, but there were so many dispels to make and so many heals to maintain. Ran out of characters to do so. Give me five seconds, it's down. Bruh. Did you run the bonus content? Or just any person play through? Since I never even realized FFX had things you could go back to. I did basically everything. Yeah, maybe that's it. The extra boosts I would get from doing the extra content. I didn't have it. So I'd usually grind my way up. And maybe you have too much knowledge. That could be too. Again, one of those cases where you didn't even realize to look up the information. I mean, I did always find it curious how we could always go back in the map. But since there was no fast travel that I was aware of, I just thought that was supposed to be some vanity thing. Like, imagine walking back to the side from the Altar of Thunder. Well, you can't really back travel until you get the airship. Exactly. And I think you would have missed out by a lot by then. I guess all the backtracking for extra content would just grind you up there. After you get the airship back traveling, it's basically you're dead. Yeah, that was really endgame. At least in Japan and EU copies. Drug Aeons. Oh, I see. Well, I never thought much of it. But I really should have looked it up, I suppose. Nah, I didn't have them. Well, neither did I, so I wouldn't know. But it would be an interesting thought to actually 100% the game this time. Both FFX and FFX2. Oh boy, that's a lot of time. That's what makes it streamable. I just really hate the idea of having to rely on a wiki all the time. And if you want 100% it, you can make a single mistake. I know. I faced that horrible reality with FFX2 already. Well, I'm basically a walking wiki. That's true. We suck to have backseat gaming all the time, though. And like I said, self-discovery is usually my type of thing, too. When I did my first time run on Deltarune, I had people tell me about a bunch of these Easter eggs. It felt so weird to just achieve that all with no repetition. Well, on X2, I can only say don't do it. <laughs> How come? I mean, I know it's painful and tedious, but... It's a <laughs> It's FFX2. Oi, oi, give me some credit. I made it until 50% or so until I effed it up. With no mistakes, I believe. The story's just crap. Oh yeah, I know. I played it a couple times prior. But when I figured out there was an alternative ending, I just had to get it myself. But that motivation ended after 40 hours of gameplay got foiled. And I think you can also mess up some quests. Yes, you can. That's why I failed. And also because I didn't have a habit of multi-saving. I just save over my old one. I did it once, never again in my life. Well, I need to do it once too. Even if I hated my life over it. But seeing it and earning it are things the difference. I saw the alt ending many, many years ago. But I want to earn it. You probably won't enjoy watching that though. Sorry in advance. The gameplay is okay, the story just lets me get mad. I kind of faded the gameplay a bit from the combat perspective, but I did like the dress spheres and open glass system. But the combat pacing limited time in FFX UI was just pure crap. You really had to remember by heart where all skills are. Four down, one right. I did get the flow of it on one of my runs, so it is doable, but it's really hard to master. Hmm, since we are at this position, I might as well actually go to the premium store really quick. So, we have no more strength potions, and we don't like that. So, I'm gonna search up some elixirs, buy some of them for myself. Let's say three of these. There we go. 1.4 million well spent. But yeah, I do agree with you. Definitely not the best game, but I'm yet to make the full journey. But one's gotta do it for the faithfulness to the series. Although... XIII2 is something I'm not sure about anymore. I heard that was crap. Well, honestly, I'm not sure. From a player perspective, I'd do it, no issue. But since we're talking about people who might have not experienced 
Final Fantasy before. I think it's better to start with titles that made the game popular. To let that commitment also sink to them. So as a creator, I also have to take the viewer perspective into question. 100% FF1 PR were like 16 hours. Yeah, I had some idea. I watched the first game on YouTube previously. Maybe like 7 years ago. On FF2, 20 hours. On FF3, 14. Okay, 3 onwards I know better. Wait, 2 was only 20 hours? Dude, I remember that series being super long. Back when I watched it. I did it with all achievements. With pre-knowledge, I assume? Well, Pixel Remaster runs a lot faster. Yeah, a bit. Alright. I'll assume I'll take 30 to 40. But even then, it's not about just the timing. It's more about the impression. Do you want to give a game that captivated most people in the days? Or something that is chronologically correct? Basically, there is no chronological aspect on FF. Well... Not as much, but franchise perspective. I want the 15 in an order, or the order of popularity. There's no story chronology, but... Well, we have a number of guys. And I do intend to finish them all. I wanted that for so many years. But I just want to make sure people don't want to drop out in the first five minutes. Well, get the early pain out of your way if you want. I mean, I am committed enough. I'll take pain. Can't say that for others who have only heard about Final Fantasy name. Again, I'm cool with going from 1 to 15, but I think for the sake of new viewers, I think 7, 8, or 10 are good picks. Or 12 even for more flashiness, but I don't think that was the best Final Fantasy. But the old games aren't that much of story games, it's still the evolution of story slash video games. Yeah, that's true. But it usually is the story ones that get you into the franchise. 12 has a good story, but you need to understand it. And F1! <laughs> I'm sorry for hurting you. For context, I was talking about 12 earlier with Timor on my streams, and uh, I said that 1 was the main character of 12 because I played it kind of scarcely back then. You just like, <laughs> he had an actual uproar at me. Nah, that character is just a filler, to be honest. Yeah, I remember told me. But hey, I never really got that far in the game. Give me some space. No, I don't know why Square included him literally last second. I guess it was between going for a narrator approach or an actual playable character. And they wanted action, so... But beats me. I don't know the story well enough to no know if it could have been implemented better. What do you think? Should I start with 12 then? Or should I go with the turn-based games? They wanted a younger lead character for more approach to the younger audience. Bro, that's lame. I can like an old dude that actually slaps. Regardless of their age. Well, I'm a numbers guy. Yeah. Too bad most aren't. I relate with you, but sadly most won't. Well, it could show the evolution of the games. That's true. Maybe go with a good one and then start doing it chronologically. I could go for one straight away too, but I don't know how people would treat it. Even though the Pixel Remaster have a lot of quality of life. Yeah, I've understood. And the fact that they are available for PC for good is phenomenal. I remember dreaming for three years prior for them to be available for PC. Since nobody in my day and age would really own an NES with a functional copy. But here we are. My lifelong dream come true. Basically one to two, really shallow story, three middle real storytelling was for and beyond. Yeah, I understood that much too. Like I remember pretty well, FF was just a pretty simple RPG journey. Well, FF1 and 2 were I think were Japan only, until PSP. I see. But the point was that there was no PC exports anyway. At least, not without emulating. And I personally don't like to dabble with that much. It's a way to play all inaccessible games, but the fact that they're not optimized for PCs makes them really janky usually. Especially the 3D games. Also, the localization of FF games is kinda yeah early on, with false numbers, etc. What do you mean by that? Basically, in the US, FF2 was actually 4 and 3 was 6 because games like 2, 3, 5 never came out in the US. So it was a mess early on until everyone could get the games. Yeah, I can imagine that. At least Square Enix finally linearized it. Times when Nintendo and Square worked together on the FF titles. Let me guess, rebranding was Nintendo's idea. I don't know, to be honest. Change then with 7, only Square Enix. 
I see. But judging from the changes, it seems like Nintendo had a word in it. To me, it feels like they were concerned about overseas sales. If they were selling a sequel without a prequel. But glad they eventually corrected that. The one thing that really surprises me though, is that if 2, 3 and 5 were not released in the US, then why was 4, 3 and not 2? Maybe didn't have the audience, I don't know. That just complicates things more, in my opinion. You're making people look for a prequel that basically doesn't exist. Well, now everybody knows the order. Yeah. And I'm kind of looking forward to digging into the games at some point. I think what I'll do is I'll give Final Fantasy 1 a chance. Nah, I'll start with the 3D game. The evolution can come later once people actually care about the series. So starting with 7. Hmm... 7 is popular, but the graphics don't give the best impression. I'm not really sure. 7 is the first 3D one. Yeah, I know. It's just that it's PS1 graphics. At least 8 was already something equivalent to PS2. You can actually tell a character's face. 8 to 9 were also PS1. Oh, really? Well, 8 already had much more refined graphics. Not modern standards, of course, but respectable. But again, I could also be a little misconceptional. Never really played 7 properly yet. But I think 7 has more of a fan base than 8 to 9. Yeah, that's true. But I'm more concerned about making my current viewer base interested in the series. 7 can come later too. Then we can have everyone enjoy 7. You're playing Flyth. That's true. And then again, my conception of how good or bad the graphics actually were are subject to my memories from many years ago. I might undervalue what 7 looked like, and it highlights 8 too much, for example. Maybe 7 is already decent, but don't remember at this point. FF8 was a bit of a pixel mess on the characters. 3D, but a bit well rough. I like it. More than the clean ones, because they look so weird to me. I guess everyone has preferences. They remastered FF8. Oh, the remaster isn't even worth it. I remember someone doing a direct comparison video. Majority of what changed in remaster was basically the UI. Everything else was nearly the same. I wouldn't spend extra for it. And FF8 is really easily exploitable. I can't play it normally anymore. Well, consider it just the perspective of someone that doesn't know yet. You won't find me doing exploits on purpose. You can mess up FF8 so hard. Alright, maybe for that reason I'll prefer 7. Well, it's not an exploit, it's just how the game works. If you know what you have to do, you're basically OP. So it's basically just meta-optimizing. You need to know two to three things that you're just speeding through. Sounds fair. At least they did make it replayable in an interesting way. Where the monsters scale with your level. Oh. So, so no level advantage. Nope, other than better spells, but the monsters get also harder. How does that amount to an RPG then? The system of FF8 is kind of weird for the first time. Yeah, I figure. Might be kind of hard to pull that card first. Would you say that FF7 is something easy to chew on? I know it has that absolute turn-based fighting system, but I don't know the details about leveling. Actually, mentioning cards, it has a good card game, and things that actually breaks FF8. You mean literally crashing the game, or breaking the power balance? Oh, power balance, yeah. FF7 has ATB, not actual turn-based. What do you mean by ATB? ATB or active time battle. So the same as FFX2? I wonder why they made such a different approach in FF10. I would say parts, but won't be the kind of sit and think experience. I think I know why I hated that game as a kid, but now it's not as much of a bother to me. Well, you said to ATB wait so you could do your inputs in time, but that's kind of lame or you're a speedrunner. Ah, uh, so I could basically turn it into turn-based. Not really. But that is, once your bar is full, it won't charge further on the other characters while you make inputs. How does turning the wave mode make it easier on, this, on the speedrunner? I mean, I know there won't be a, a certain turn order. Rather, characters and enemies have fill rates. But you're not forced to quick time thinking if you want that. There's a thing called weight tricking, so you can maximize your turns and maybe the enemy gets less. Yeah, that's what I was kind of expecting. The funny thing is that FFX2's weight system doesn't even work that way. It works if you are selecting skills, but when you're passive in the menu, enemies can still move. It's hilarious since it's a reaction game for when the menu opens. But well, I do understand why weight mode would be lame. But it's a little harsh in the beginning once you learn the ropes. 
giving lots of turns to the enemy. Well, basically, you still need to select something like attack or magic, and when you have weight on, it stops until the next input. All right, so that's pretty much how FF FFX2 worked, at least in my opinion. I'm a lot more malleable now, so it should be okay. X2 is too long ago. Fair enough. All right, I'm full. BRB. 100% it has a teen. Oh yeah, that's long. All right, let's run that inventory in. How much is that? Another 6.7 million. Nice. Any other crap? Um, Ocus Helmet. Uh, I think that's worth something. I'll back it real quick before I go back. And right now I'm making myself the pet candy while I'm at it. I'm wasting my, uh, upcut stone here, but that's okay. It's not like I'm really in the need of having this conserved for as long as possible. So just bank that in and also grab myself 75 cloud berries. Make myself a uh, F candy. Then make myself an E candy. Use the angel, use the feed, and let's go back. Oh, one minute return. Not too bad. Got my angel fed too. Forgot last time. 3% more crit chance. Massive boost, hey! Basically 10% cumulative bonus to me. 32, 33. But yeah, thanks for explaining the mechanics. I think for the sake of action and more approachability, I think I'll go for 7. And I'll learn to handle ATB properly this time. It's a challenge. But I can handle it when I was 3 to 4, so you'll get it. Yeah, probably. It's just never been my preference since 10 was my go-to. So I was expecting all the experiences to be the same. And I genuinely like 10's combat system. Maybe a little repetitive on the creep fights, but it was a fun concept anyway. Maybe Dragon Quest could be something for you. Perhaps. But I don't know how readily available those are compared to Final Fantasy. I've heard lots of good about Dragon Quest 2 though. And according to anime pop culture referring games, Dragon Quest is definitely often referred to. Guess it's sense to say that both are the cream of the crop in Japan. When on Steam there's only the newest one. Sad. You think Gog would have it? Oh jeez, we're already four hours in. Lots of lots of grinding, oh my god. But we're nearly there, guys. 35% to go. Oh, it's already almost 10 p.m. Oh, that's gonna be a bit jarring, but I'll have to make it happen. Don't think so. Dragon Quest never got really big in the West. Yeah, never heard it on West for sure. I know one on PS2, some on 3DS. I guess the Pokemon took the throne from turn-based games. I mean, Pokemon is all West talks about. But the first one you could easily emulate. Oh gosh, not again. Like I said earlier, I don't really prefer to emulate. But I guess for 2D games, that's fine. But I think FF1 was completely turn-based. Yeah, I remember so too. Like then, but you need to know the speed stats. I think 2A was ATB, but still turn-based. I need to honestly get myself a gamepad at some point, in case I ever want to emulate 3D games. But it depends on if the emulator accepts any other controllers. I think they were still turn-based. Yeah, that's what my memory cell tells me too. But you could see the progression bars, if I recall correctly. It was kind of visualized turn-based. I don't think so. I could be wrong too. Been a while, but I have this vague recollection. But yeah, I think I'll stick with 7. More approachable and representative of the series. Since many of the later titles do lean towards live combat. I think ATB wasn't 4 the first time. Never saw that, so can't be sure. 3 had the job system. I actually did play 3 on my DS at some point. But I didn't play it frequently enough and forgot where I had to go next. Pretty confusing for a first timer though. Nah, I checked, it didn't have it. ATB wasn't 4 earliest. Alright, thanks. Not that it really matters, though. I'm leaving the pixel titles for later anyway. Just start with Remake Rebirth and get yourself a capture card in PS5. Yeah, screw that. I ain't getting any current generation consoles yet. I'm too poor for that. But they stressed Rebirth, really. Had over 100 hours. And the fact that the game spans between three different installments? No thank you. Not my poor wallet! But I could have gotten Remake and Rebirth for the price of one. I know, but it's still pretty damn expensive. Just for perspective, I don't usually buy games more than 20 euros. So FF7 Remake is out of the question. But the time I spent on them, worth it. I've had good titles in the 10, 20 euros entertaining me for hundreds of hours. So I'll just take whatever I feel like is best for me. Until I can afford actually mass consuming games. Either I get better off for creating pace for it. And the latter isn't going to happen anytime soon. Well, how much XP you have right now? 71%. I'd say that we're still stuck here for another hour. 
Kind of spooky since I'm about to enter quiet time. But this must be delivered. Are you getting strapped on time? Stopping now would be a mistake. You said it. I have enough time. That's good. And as they say, strike while the iron is hot. To be honest, this is going to be a pain to edit in time. Especially if I include all of our conversations. You don't need to. It's content. Maybe not everything, but whatever I feel like is relevant. And not as much about us repeating ourselves. Well, if you say it's content, every mob is content too. I won't go that far. But well, most of my grinding episodes have been mostly conversation. Since that's the only sensational thing I can stick the time into. But well, I've been keeping your gums flapping for the next three hours. Not at all, moment. So no more talking. Don't you dare wiggle your way out of this boy. Okay, so at this point, me and Timor have been spending way too much time with each other to the point where I think we were both getting a little bit insane. From this point onward, the level of our discussion starts to degrade to such a degree that I decided that I'm not gonna be including most of it. So I'm gonna be including some of the weird funny bits that will basically summarize the whole one and a half hours that goes on from here. And I hope you'll enjoy this. Thank you. Thinking advantages of other people to make content, I see. Oh no, I've been found out. On the topic of Final Fantasy though, I'm not completely sure yet whether I'd start it right away or, or a little later. No, start today week. Bro, with what time? Less sleep, more playtime. And stream past quiet time? Poor Eam cannot scream. Just don't be loud. Bro, do you even know a situation where I'm not loud? Um, Maybe when you're asleep? You sure about that? Another solution to make your room soundproof. That's gonna be a little expensive, I believe. I might as well buy my own house. You just need a small soundproof chamber. All right, let's make it in my toilet. Problem solved. <laughs> I think there's other problems attached to streaming live feed publicly in the middle of the toilet. Just deactivate the game for B breaks. And probably my mic too. Now that I think about it, since I've only played FFX and even that half-assedly, I really am just a chump. Yeah, that's right! <laughs> FF Summer Marathon, if I have the time. I can only give you false advices now. Quit school, just keep playing kids at home, don't do it. That's why I won't take any life advice from you. It's time for you to level up. 88%. God damn it, you're too slow. More passion, run faster, go! Okay. But don't jump now. Did you say jump? No! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> no more heels now. It's a trampoline. No, please don't do this to me. Maybe that will motivate you. I'll take that as an offensive act from you. Nah, why would you think that? There's nothing wrong with me sharing my 20th copy of Diglett. I got chat blocked, don't mind me. I think I've chatted more and it never occurred. Only thing I get are bot messages. Nah, this guy chatted too. Because I got them when I'm quiet. Even though I'm doing the same fi same when I'm just healing myself. Except I'm forced to chat. Oi, don't make it sound like slave labor to others. Please help me. Oi, guys, guys, don't listen to this guy. There's nothing wrong going on, he just wants to give the wrong impression. You mean I'm free and independent if I blink three times? Well, I think you've blinked more than three times already. I don't think my character blinked. Well, blink three times now. Well, I got sticks into my eyes, so I gotta blink, blink, it hurts. 95%. I can kill it myself. Nah, we don't leave the damsel in distress. It is my job as a manly man to protect your body. You really wanna make those last person alone, I think. <laughs> I mean, I am messagistic enough for that. Okay, bye, I go. Timor, no! I told you he wasn't a hostage. <laughs> Cover blown. <laughs> well, I won't charge you. We'll just settle matters later. Oh, no, I'm getting hit. Don't be a baby. Okay, one we one. <laughs> You really sure you want to waste time on this? I'll show you who's the baby. You can even choose your treatment. Murder with the yo-yo. Torture with the stick. And severed by axis. I'll take option three. And be sure to turn me into a kebab stick. I want to be nice and tasty. Timor, I think your brain cells are melting. I think I need a therapist out of that section. 
I was only getting warmed up. Okay, maybe I need a therapist too. You need more than one. Yeah, the first one would go through mental breakdown. We need the other therapist to therapize the traumatized one. I think we'll break the first 10. I break the first one. After that, they do the jump for me. They'll keep falling like dominoes. All right, guys. It's been a long journey, but we are here. Level 90. Oh, boy. It's over. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I can't go cry. <laughs> oh, my God. Yep. You can go cry now. It's been about five and a half hours now. So, yeah, we spent like a solid five hours grinding. It was insane. Thanks for help, though. If I can ask you for one more favor, though. Buff me up for a tower after I gear up. Why did I say yes? I'm a completely psycho. <laughs> well, beats me. <laughs> Hope you had fun, though. You want to do tower somewhere else? I want to do tower for showcasing that again. But I will do a real damage check a bit later. Before we go, I must finally put on my final battle gear. So, I'm finally pulling this stuff out of the bank. It's unbelievable. All right. So, they got the swords, and I know the axes are not in the best shape possible right now. That's just something we'll have to accept. But, compared to the swords, I think they'll do just fine. We got the axes, they'll do more damage probably. And I'll refine this gear to be at a better shape at another time, because honestly, if I spend more time grinding now, then that would be just, you know, insane. I'll be doing that as something I'll do after this recording. So, multiple recordings for this one episode, indeed. Yes. Here we go. Day's boots. Day's gauntlets. Day's suit. And day's helmet. Oh, man. And slapping those axes as well. <sighs> wow, that feels amazing. Plus 20 strength. Plus 10 strength. 60% increased attack. A little bit less increased HP and hit rate because... I don't have this on plus six yet, but I will I will balance it out later. Let's put on this off. There we go. Look at that beauty. Oh my god. The cloak fits so perfectly. It's a little bit of a different shade of red, but it fits a lot better than the original cloak. I feel alive. Long have I awaited. And here I am. Well, you're just a kid in the 90s. I think you're a little wrong with that. I'm actually from 2000s. <laughs> so, let's put the last points to strength. 3.8k damage. Always those young kids here. I'm sorry to have tainted the gameplay experience for you raisins. Anyway, can I have my last round of buffs? It's time to go and try the tower. My gear isn't in the best shape possible, but I'll fine-tune it at another time. Maybe tomorrow. More like next year. You just believe it. Okay, so for those who don't know about the tower yet, so basically there is this NPC in Flaris called the Secret Room Manager. And as you can see here, he has a blue exclamation mark. And that means it's a daily quest. So basically, you can go to the tower every single day to get yourself a pretty easy amount of EXP that you can take advantage of. And depending on the level you are, you can get more quests. Or you can ac access a later level in the tower, which will in turn give you some more EXP, usually. As long as you have enough quests provided to overcome the other. But yeah, since we are at level 90, you can start going to tower at 86 and you get the first quest. But since we are at level 90, we get three quests that we can do. And we're gonna do all of them. So once we go inside here, you can see here that we have this 4 second tower 1 floor solo. We are gonna take that because... We cannot bring anyone with us, and when solo, these guys are a little bit less tougher. Or, well, they're not they're not less tougher, but we need to kill less. And on top of that, because we're playing on solo, since we don't have a ringmaster with us, we get to keep the ringmaster buffs we got earlier. As Rim buffs or Timor sadly cannot be here. But yeah, I don't think I can really make use of linked attack at this point, because we got nobody around at the minute. But that's okay. Now, how much do I have time? 11 minutes. I'd rather have six minutes left for my buffs here, so I think I'm pulling multiple frost on tanking. Yeah, this will do. Mmm. Did it. Nice. Whew. 
All right, so I actually did that AOE a bit earlier with Recorn Set 2, but honestly, that is still pretty pretty risky. But then again, it's also because I have reduced defenses the minute because I don't have as much HP coming from my set now because I don't have the plus six. So that also counts. Well, I think I'm still a bit faster with 1v1 here. Or maybe I'm faster with the AOE, but not so much faster that I would actually prefer that method. Because it is a bit risky. I am not designed for AOE after all. So I need to take that into account. So once we get to 50 kills here, you can see that it will spawn up the giant catsy. And that's gonna be the same way with the next part where we have to kill 50 harpies. And these harpies are gonna then spawn again the giant harpy. Which is gonna be a quest for later, but we will not need that for now. As we don't have the quest required for that. That was for level 92 plus, And we're not there obviously. All we gotta do is kill the catsies. Kill the giant catsy. And then get, kill the harpies. Sadly I don't think I'll have the boss for harpies at this point though. So it's gonna be a little bit risky. But maybe if I'm good enough about it. I'll make it just fine. Congratulations Mr. Unstoppable. You won our race I guess. Ah, you weren't even close. As my friend was losing her marbles by being stuck with me for the next five hours. Yeah, I FK the whole time. All right, well, that's an unfair win. Got something else you have to do? Yeah, I took a break and set up a shop to sell all the crap. Thanks, getting full. If it's really a lot of reds building up that you don't need and that won't sell, consider vendoring the extras. Did you drain out the blood for lippies? And yes, I did. It wouldn't have been possible without a proper... Ringmaster though, and that requires a ringmaster that actually had cleared the quest before so you can imagine how hard that was Luckily, I knew someone that had a ring master ringmaster at the right level I can imagine with blade you need to go to the spawn hotspot with multiple mobs attacking. Yeah, all right, so Now that we are at this point you can see that the giant cat is spawned at this doorway over here once we kill 50 monsters And now our task is to finish killing it in five minutes now, this one was a bit risky on Noban, at least, when I was using my Recorn set. And I don't be I believe this won't be any different this time around either. Yeah, he hurts like hell. Oh my god. So I'm putting on my defensives here, just for safety. I think, aside from that, we're just gonna endure what this guy has, has to give to us. Well, I know that the damage doesn't look so impressive right now with the Angel Axes, but do mind you that these guys are not elemental. You can see from the Grey Ball behind the levels that they don't have one. And that means that we cannot take advantage of the uh, elemental bonus that we could have. So, really, we're actually doing pretty good damage for someone that doesn't have any elements at all. But don't worry. I'll be doing a real damage this tomorrow. I'm gonna finish up upgrading my set and my weapons with the spare money that I have. And then... I'll do my final damage test. And then... It's gonna be the end of the road. Did we get anything? Nah. So, about these giants, they also have a chance of dropping some very good weapons. Oh, wait. These guys are... These guys are fire! Okay, I'm actually moving on to historic source for the time being then. Because I think I can do better with that then. So yeah, a little bit of a drop from the Angel Axis in general, sadly, but... I'll take advantage of this while I still can. Yeah, ironically, Harpies are faster to kill because they have elements. It's so sad. But at least the 50 kills won't be too hard to do. And we have four minutes of buffs left, so that is honestly pretty good. I think we can actually do this within the buff time limit. But yeah, the tower monsters themselves don't really give that much EXP, but it is the quest that makes this worthwhile. It only takes about 10, 20 minutes to do. If you're good. And at the end of it, you can get a pretty good plethora of EXP, which consists of anything between... 5% and whatever reductions you're getting after you're leveling up through the previous quests. So even with this, like, even with this 10 minute grind, I can get myself, like, 10% XP. And if you compare that to my normal leveling speed earlier, that's a lot of XP, honestly. Like, a lot faster than I was getting earlier. To be honest, the saddest thing would be if I actually happened to die here in the tower. If I had died at the Catsy earlier, as somebody who just leveled up to 90, I would just lose the whole for... I would just lose the whole 4% because I don't have a ringmaster here. That would be so sad and hilarious at the same time. And then I would have to go do another 20 minute grind just to get my EXP back up. But yeah, anyway, we are now done with the tower for now. We could go for the giant harpy, but honestly, I don't think nobody's strong enough for that. This thing, this thing is level 100. So we are a little bit underwhelmingly weak for that. Both in damage and in terms of defensiveness. I think he's gonna one-shot us in a worst case scenario. So we're not gonna take that risk. And besides, we just lost our buff, so even more reason to do so. Anyway, now that we're done, we can go and turn in this quest quests here. And as we can see here from the daily quests, the Light of the Favor as its own level gives me 5%. 
Curiosity Kill the Cat 2, two levels below, 3.88%. And Curiosity Kill the Cat 1 with 2.96% at four levels below. So, so, so in total, this gives me about 11%, close to 12% even. As we can see here, we already got to 13%, which is a pretty good amount of XP, honestly. So yeah, with that being said, I think we are done with this for now. Again, I'll be making a real damage check tomorrow once I get the time, because honestly, now it's getting so late, I would still have to do the upgrading and final touches, so I'll leave that then. But for now, on this recording, that's gonna be all for now. I want to say at this point that thank you very much, everyone, for joining on Nobun's leveling journey. It has been truly a wondrous journey for me, and I've enjoyed this so much. And you guys are a major part why it's been such a great thing for me. Thank you for everyone joining on the ride. I hope that you guys have been as excited to see Nobin grow as I have. And, well, I guess we'll be seeing on other content that I'll be releasing on my channel in the future. Something else in Nobin. But thank you everyone for joining on the journey. And I'll be seeing you on the damage check. Alright, so hello again guys! Today's a new day and I have returned to do the damage testing before we end off the series. But before we get started with this one, let me explain a couple of things first. Here we have my own ringmaster and she has all the offensive buffs maxed out. She also has an inscaling of 12, so she will be able to increase Nobert's combat potency pretty effectively. On top of that, before we get started, I want to also buff myself off and do a direct comparison to my old gear versus my new gear, so you can see exactly how much better day set actually is. So, as we can see here with the old historic stores and the recorn set with plus 12% attack bonus in there, I have about 3.4k attack power with maximum attack speed at 30% crit rate. That is pretty good. But honestly, once I put on the day set, you're gonna see exactly how much difference it's gonna, going to be making. And of course, also the angel axes. So let's put this stuff on. Here we can see that even without the recorn set, I am still at maximum attack speed, even without Berserk. And that's because I happen to be buffed on this one. I no longer need the attack speed as much as I used to. And this is because the day set gives me extra 50% crit chance on top of giving me extra strength. It also happens to give some hit rate too, so it has even higher hit rate than the recorn set did, but we're not gonna be paying attention to too much on that. We haven't even put the angel axes on yet, and these things are quite the piece as well. As you may remember, my historic swords were plus 6 as well, with plus 5 um, elements. But now that I'm done with my upgrading session, I did the same to my axes here. And on top of that, I also get an extra strength point, because I, I injected both the axes, and I got a total of 3 strength points. Just let me put on the appropriate element on this one. And as we can see here, with the maximum bonuses here, all active, we happen to have a, an attack speed of 93% with all the buffs active, but we have a whopping 53% critical chance here. Our hit rate did drop a bit, and our attack speed is not quite at 100% anymore, but that is okay because we still have the Berserk effect, so we'll still be able to get 100% attack speed, and on top of that, our hit rate is still very acceptable. With the Angel being put on top of this, we'll be reaching out to whopping 56% critical strike chance, which is pretty insane in my opinion. We basically almost double the crit chance here, and these axes, as we can see here with the current bonuses, will be giving me 4.2k damage, which is almost a whole thousand compared to what we had before. I'll also be conducting this test without any other attack boosters such as Link Attack or Inconsumables like Upcut Stone. So this way we'll be getting the raw damage that nobody would have just with buffs, and everything that we put on top of that will only be a bonus. So, with that being said, let's go see what our Noban is capable of in his final form. Right, also before we start, I just wanted to also remind you, in case I didn't mention that earlier, that the reason why I picked my current elements, Earth and Fire, is because of the enemies we'll be facing off from here on. As you can see on the map, there are some fire enemies here, but they are pretty broken apart. But we have a bit better consistency of electric mobs here, from 93 to 98. And these ones will be the ones we'll be fi facing with Earth Elemental Weapons, as Earth is strong against electric. From there on, there is a very smooth gap between Shuhamas and Glathans, and because wind is also shown over here at the Dead Wilderness, I felt like that was the best choice to go for, so I took fire to fight against wind. Also, Glathans are known to be the best farming location regardless, so even if I didn't go for Kimmerdons, which are not told to be the best place to level at, um, I can still just stage my element later and possibly go for the bears, which is also something that people recommended me to do, if I do want to go to the desert at some point. But anyway, that's all that I have to say about my elemental choices, but now let's get to the real test and see how much power our Noban now has. 
Holy Jesus, that's a lot of damage. I already did a 12k crit there, and that's insane because I don't even have any... I don't have any damage boosters. I used to need those to get that much. And he's critting more than half the time. He's actually, like, shredding these monsters now. It's incredible. Can we see, like, a 30k happening or something like that? That would be really nice. Almost 13k right there. And even then, like, there we go, 13.6k. And notice that we are critting most of the time here, so... It really is, like, you know... Only, only the sky's the limit. With all these crits, I'm taking very few hits to actually kill off these guys, and I'm just trading them apart in seconds. And considering how, like, in comparison, to, in terms of, like, levels I put onto these items, like, the only difference we have is 4% extra attack on the suit. The gear upgrade here is pretty damn relevant. 14k, right there. Oh my god. Okay, so we're not quite hitting 15k yet, but we are really close. And the fact that our crate rate really just doubled there, on top of the fact that I'm already doing more damage than I used to before, I think this is a pretty insane upgrade. So yeah, what can I say? Noben really is shredding butt now. And I wasn't really honestly expecting these great results, but I guess surprises are always saved best for last. This is... outrageous. This is beyond what I was expecting out of Noben, but... Well, I got a pretty good set, I got pretty good weapons, I had everything sorted out. So... I guess this much was to be expected. As you can see here as well, I'm leveling- I'm doing this on level party, but we are getting very little XP. We are getting only 0.101, 0.103 EXP here. So EXP gains from here will be getting pretty damn rough. This is also here to convey you guys the reason why I won't be continuing this series. But yeah, I think this pretty much displays everything that I had to know about how Noben is doing now. And I hope this really gave you a pretty good perspective to how much more stronger Noben now is. Needless to say, I am pretty proud of my little boy here. He's he's gotten so strong and this is a character that I can go get behind on. This is unbelievable. When I made Noben... I wasn't expecting me to make a character that would reach the V's levels. Or make a character that would reach the V's kinds of capacities. And he is not the character with the biggest investment I've done so far. I think I've spent even more money on my Ranger here. So, that to, on that to only say that Noben hasn't even reached the apex I could reach with him. I think that's what makes this the most exciting part. With maybe just a little bit more upgrades and maybe some other enhancements, we could make this guy hit 15k sometimes. And that would be just an awesome thing to see sometimes. But I'm not gonna be worrying about that for now. But anyway, I hope this damage system gave some insight how much powerful you can get with the angel weapons and the day set. Overall, I would say that this does depend a lot on the fact that you have a ringmaster for this to work, because you will be taking a lot of the tech speed away from you if you don't. But if you do have a partner, this is definitely a seamless transition, as you will be still maintaining your attack speed, but you'll get everything else that you'll find very useful on these levels. And on top of that, if you do get to 105 at some point, you can also get your hands on the Hanna set, which also comes with bonus attack speed. So that won't be a concern long term. And you can wait until Hanna's before you switch over to your set. But level 90, with my current setup, I think this was the perfect choice. And I'm looking forward to if I ever will get Noben to 105. But alright, that's all the damage this thing I'll be doing. Thank you so much for joining on this one, and I hope this was useful to you. So... We have reached the road's end, and what a long journey it has been, filled with adventure and many encounters. I know that some of you wish that Noben's story would still continue, but even great things must eventually come to a close. After a grand total of 21 episodes to commemorate Noben's legacy, I've decided that it's finally time to drive the final nail to the coffin. But what will become of Noben? He will be included in my roster of characters at last, and continue to receive the love that he deserves from this day forward. He will no longer be an icon and a character for a YouTube series, but someone that I'll keep playing with indefinitely. What this means is that Nobat's adventure isn't truly over yet, but will only take place in a realm beyond YouTube. As some of you may already know, I also stream my adventures in Flight Universe from time to time on Twitch, and this means that he might make a reappearance there going forward, whenever I feel like playing with him. With the conclusion of the series, I seek to focus on making some different kinds of Life Universe content, and also explore the boundaries of other RPG games while leaving more time for streaming. As an aspiring creator, I want to spread my wings and try out new things, and test how far my passions and creativity will take me. And I hope that all of you are willing to be a part of this journey with me. 
thank you deeply for enjoying Nobis through the 90. And I hope to see you around on my future adventures. But until next time, it's bye-bye. <laughs>